Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my Game of Thrones Legends mobile game content. I'm really glad you took the time to stop by today and watch and I hope that what I'm going to talk about today you'll find interesting and you'll consider coming back and watching some of my other content on this game. Having a really good time with this game. There's a few things that about it that I'm not liking, but there's a lot of things about it that I am liking, and it is a new game, so I'm hoping that in time they'll straighten these things out. Um, but what I want to talk about today is one of the things that one of my subscribers, Lewis McAuliffe, and I hope I said that right. Uh, I'm not sure if it's McAuliffe or McAuliffe. But one of my subscribers asked me a question, said, hey, what, do you, what are your thoughts on how you're leveling your champions? What's worth it to level and what's not? <clears throat> Excuse me. And those kind of thoughts. And that's a really good topic. It's a really good question because I've kind of struggled with this myself. As you can tell, I really haven't put a lot of work into leveling hardly any of the ones that I have unlocked. You can look down through my member list and I have 39 of 95 unlocked and just about, I don't know, 90 something percent of my heroes are level one. Now I have, whenever I've achieved the tokens for them in pulls, I have went ahead and upgraded their star level but I have not really put the effort into upgrading their level itself. Now there are a couple of exceptions with this and that would be the legendaries that I have. You can see that I have a two-star Daenerys. She's max level for that star level of 100. A two-star Ghost. He's max level. A one-star Sansa. She's max level. One-star Jon Snow. He's max level. And a one-star Arya Stark, she's max level. And then also Tyrion, max level for one star. And then I kind of just hit or miss with the next one, two, three, four, five, six heroes. Um, the main reason why I have Robert Baratheon, Arya Stark, and Jon Snow leveled to you know close to max like her or like him, and and she's max, and he's close to max for. Well, no, he's two stars, so he's got a hundred. So this one and this one could possibly go to a hundred. But the main reason why I put those levels into them is because at the start of the game, they gave us Robert Baratheon. And I think for everyone, it's the same thing from what I'm seeing, because I started a second account just to kind of see... And they ended up giving me the exact same heroes, Arya the Green, Jon Snow the Red, the Lord of Bones, the Stone Crow Mender, and Sandor Clegane. I think they give those to everyone. Now, this one I leveled up to max because she was in my party up until just here recently when I got Sansa and Arya the Sisters as legendary and I replaced her with those. Robert Baratheon was in my party at the start because he was one of the best I had at the start, so I put quite a bit of work into him. Jon Snow was in my party at the start, and then I shortly got the blue Jon Snow, and I quickly replaced him with that. Although I like his power better than his power, but he's a legendary, so he eventually ends up being stronger. Lord of Bones, Stone Crow Mender, and Sandor Clegane, I never used yet, but they have some levels because on the dailies that you do every day, there's usually a one that says uh, level up a hero two levels or something like that. It's not on here today, but it, it's on here a lot. And that's one of the things that I do is I go in there and I just dump some levels on these real quick just to keep them kind of going up. This one I like one of these days I might use him, but I don't know. Uh, I have him up to three stars, so he's tempting. This one I definitely want to put some effort into, the Stone Crow Mender, because during the first Dragon Egg event, I saw how cool it was to use a healer 
in a party build to help you actually survive longer so that you could match more dragon eggs so this is someone that i'm definitely going to put some effort into going forward and i'm going to max her out to have her available for different styles of party compositions to do different event type things i think healers will be very useful for that going forward so i'm going to call that one and i'm going to say hey going forward put some effort into your your off cycle healers because i think later on down the road when we come up with some crazy party compositions that work good for certain events healers are going to be critical for that now if you go on down you can see another one the dragonstone mender i have luckily got enough stars to take him up to three i'm also going to put him up in that class and i'm going to work on him i'm going to go ahead and put a couple levels into him so that he actually bumps up into that group i think he'll go up in there i don't know let's see Go back out and go back in. Well, whatever. I wanted him to come up in there in this group right here so that I can keep my eye on him. Because those two healers are the ones, I think those are the only healers I have at this time. I'm going to put some effort into those. Sandor Clegane, uh, he was one of the ones that was given to you at the start. And I just threw some levels into him because I needed something to achieve my daily goal. Basically is the only reason... Uh, so I don't really plan on using him, even though he may be good. I don't know. I've just never really checked into him very much. Now, one other one that I'm seeing that I'm definitely going to put some effort in going down the road is the Zaro Zohan Daxos. His shield ability is going to be so useful uh, whenever he is... Wait a minute, that's not the right one leader skill that's not the right one this one impregnable vault grants all allies a shield equal to six percent of his hit point pool and also gains plus five defense this shield that he throws on everybody in the party can be very useful for events and i know that going forward he's going to have some definite use uh, in certain style party compositions that can benefit from using a shield. Like on the dragon egg event, I noticed he was a really super good one to put in your party because he would throw up the shield and if you would time it just right to where you leveled up his power but just let it sit right before the dragon was going to come out and attack you if you were about you know had his bar about 95 percent full or whatever you would go ahead and pop zero and throw that shield down on everybody and then the dragon would hit you and the shield would absorb that attack allowing you to stay alive way longer and if you would time that with the heals then it worked out really good um i think that's going to be an outstanding party composition for that particular event so i'm definitely going to put some effort into him now you look at my home page and you see that i have fifty four thousand silver and the reason why i have so much is because the the way this game is level gated like this character right here is a two star i have her maxed out i can't put any more levels into this character until i get another star i'm at one of 35 tokens on her right now so who knows when that's gonna be that could be next week that could be next year i don't know how long it's going to take me to get more tokens on her so as you can see i'm kind of stuck and the party that i use right now is daenerys ghost sansa john and Arya. i have all them max level and i can't use any silver on them so my silver is just stacking up and a lot of the people in my alliance are saying well why don't you just level up your other heroes and just burn your silver on that well that sounds good but when you're putting levels into these characters it does not increase your overall power right now my overall power is at 194 to 11 and that is derived from the power of my team that i'm using not from the power of all my heroes added together 
So does it really do me any good to throw all that resources at these characters that I may or may not ever use? I mean, I'm starting to think that no, it really doesn't. And that's why I am just letting them sit at level one because I really don't see the need to level them right now because right now I'm trying to make this party work. So this is where all my focus is. And if I try to level some of these characters, I have to spend food and silver to level them. So what that means is I'm having to use my resources to throw on to heroes that I may or may not ever use. And I'm basically tying up those resources for no reason. Because right now, the only thing I really can do is level my people's gear. And like right now, her crossbow, I just got this one with a subclass bonus on it. So I went ahead and slotted it. You can see I was putting some effort into the one before there but wasn't subclass to her. But now I have her subclass, so now I want to put some effort into leveling up her gear. To do that, it requires food. So if I spend the food leveling up heroes that I may or may not use, then that's less food I have to be able to level up her weapon, which I really need to be doing. Because right now she has a level 1 crossbow, with 726 attack power. But if I was to utilize all this food I have, I now have... Okay, that's the max right there. I now have... I'm spending 75,000 food to put 10 levels on this bow, and now I'm going to increase her attack power 193. That's a pretty good sized chunk right there. Plus, it's going to increase her defense... And plus, it's going to increase her health. So it's going to make her hit harder. It's going to make her take less damage. And it's going to make her survive longer by spending this food upgrading her gear. So boom. Now that happened. And now she's stronger. I should have looked at her power before I did that and then showed it to you now. But, oh, there it was. It hadn't upgraded yet. So 29,315 was her power. And then now, after I put that effort into her, her subclass type crossbow, now it's went up to 29,770, which will affect the overall power on me now because my team member that I'm using has increased in power. One thing you want to make sure you're paying attention to on gear is that I just want to point out is, yes, I have epics on all of these, but I only have the proper subclass peerless on two of them which then gives me a subclass bonus. We'll have 15% higher skills to use this gear properly and gain a boost in might. So 15% boost in might, which is a big deal. So if you grind, 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 and you finally get the proper subclass gear, then you can put the effort into it. Now, I'm just going to say that any effort you put into upgrading your gear that you have on your characters is probably a good thing, but I would not put too, too much effort into upgrading commons because commons are easy to get. You get them with every chapter that you defeat. But epics will drop about every five chapters. You'll get an epic crate. And you, if you're watching the type of event you're in, whether it's for a marksman or a protector or strategist, you'll be getting gear for that class. And that's what you try to do when you grind. And then hopefully you get lucky and get a drop. Like this one, I had a, a different subclass bow on her before. And I just got the subclass crossbow for her peerless class. It's taken me a few days to get that and probably 50, well, 50 to 100 matches that I ground to get that. And I luckily got this one. 
So now I don't feel bad about putting all my effort into upgrading this one for her because it's an epic and it's also the proper subclass. So I'm getting the best bonuses I can get out of this item. So leveling this one up will be to my best advantage as a hero. It's good that I had this one as an epic because it had better stats than a normal common, but it didn't have the subclass type bonus. Now I do, so now I'm way ahead of the curve on this one. And eventually when I get enough food, I'll take this bow and throw it into this one and it will give it a lot of experience because I've already put 14 levels into it. So when I use it, it's going to give me way more experience than a level one would do. But anyway, that's getting off off topic here. So leveling my heroes. Yeah, I mean, right now, at the stage I'm in of the game, I'm of a mindset that I'm not even going to waste the resources on these until somebody comes up and says, Hey, the party with a stone crow shaman, a poisoner, a tanner's roll murder, and a ravenous bone collector is the ultimate. Their skills mesh so well together. Then I'm going to come down here and say, Okay, let me try that. And I'm going to go boom, 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 leveling these up and use them. But until then, until something that's just totally broken surfaces and people say, Hey, this is the best thing ever. I'm not going to put my effort into using my resources towards leveling them. I'm going to put my resources where they count, and that's going to be leveling my active team that I'm using up, and that means leveling their gear. Right now, like I said, silver is of no use to me, but when I do happen to luckily hopefully get a star on one of those and can do some levels, then boom, I'm ready to go. Or when I do get another character that I want to put some effort in, boom, I'm ready to go. You know, and that's kind of what my mindset is. Now I'm watching my storage capacity on this item right now. Silver, it shows that I'm at a level level eight storage facility and I have the ability to store up to 90K. I'm about 60% there right now. So if I still have not been able to use my silver about when I get up here in about the 85 to 90% storage capacity range has filled, then I will boom, come over here and pop another level in my silver storage and bump that capacity up. That way I'm not capped out and just wasting silver. Now, if I ever did get to the point that my storage was full and every match that I'm fighting, I would just be wasting silver, then yeah, I would definitely come in here and like this healer and this guy that I said I was interested in, in working on and this other healer, I'll start dumping some silver into them because I know that that's not a waste because eventually down the road, I'm going to do something with those, I think. So it's a much better return on my investment, I feel, to dump that silver into characters that I'm interested in using later than just dumping it randomly on other characters. So that's kind of a long-winded discussion. It went along a uh, lot longer than I thought it was going to, but I wanted to kind of stay as on topic as I could with this, with the question that my subscriber asked, Lewis, about, you know, what's your thoughts on how to level your heroes and what's the best thing to do? I don't know if that's the best thing to do, but for me, that sounds like a smart plan that gives me some return on investment and doesn't waste in my eyes materials because i'm all about being efficient especially when i'm trying to grow and play with as little monetary spending as possible uh, ideally i would like to play this game free to play but i just you're going to have to put a little bit of money into this game to get anywhere because of the way they've got you gated at every turn with either energy or with hero stars. They're stopping your play progression until you spend. And they must have the, the numbers on that to show them that that's a good form of investment for them because people will just mindlessly throw money at it. But I don't know. For me, it doesn't feel good because uh, I'm basically hit a brick wall at certain points in my play and it's really frustrating so but anyway this is kind of my thoughts on how leveling heroes is efficient in my mind if you have some better thoughts 
or things that I'm not thinking about or things that are even, you know, way smarter than what I'm come up with, which is totally possible because I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. But please put those in the comments and let me know because I'm, I read every single one of them and I try to respond to every single one of them and I will, you know, see your comments and I'll give it some thought. Because you you definitely come up with you know some good ideas. It's obvious Lewis came up with this great idea for a topic, and and I totally got to run with that. And I appreciate him. But I appreciate the rest of you guys for watching my content as well. Thank you for being here today, and I hope I really hope that you have a great day. Thank you.